I'll be comparing these three cartridges on four different targets to see how different they really are. Up first is this pressure treated lumber cube. Wait a second, that's not a cube. Well, you know what? It's close enough. Anyway, there'll be two shots from each cartridge, and it'll be followed up by a three-quarter inch piece of plywood that I forgot to bring over here. Let me go grab that real quick. This three-quarter inch piece of plywood should tell us if any of the cartridges make it the whole way through, and I think we are good to go. Based on the numbers, the 38 special's up first, so let's get to it. Let's see what happened. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I hit the post right here, and it looks like the larger portion of the first bullet hit up here. I started doing something weird. The other one hit straight on, so let's see what happened. Absolutely nothing on the back. Absolutely nothing, and I don't think that a uh, second head-on shot's going to change anything about that. Let's move on to the 9. I guess the block just wasn't sitting in there very good, or the 9mm is that powerful? I mean, let's face it, we all know that's not true. Let's see what happened to the... Ooh, that one was a little close. I don't know uh, which one it actually was, but the top one is a pretty solid hit. Let's check out and see what happened. Ooh, okay, it blew its way through. So that one did too. I mean, I, I don't know if we're going to count that one, but this one blew right through the block. Let's see what happened to the... Ooh, the other one that hit pretty close to the 38 special definitely did not go through this uh, three-quarter inch piece of plywood so that must mean that both bullets are close let's oh i see something here we go and i think i saw another one on the way there we go. Both of them barely had any energy by the time they made it to the three-quarter inch piece of plywood, as you could see by that top one. The other one, I guess that was from the other one? I don't know, but they definitely made it through the 6x6 piece of pressure-treated lumber. But I'm pretty sure the 357 Magnum is going to show us who's boss. <laughs> That looked like a freaking wood chipper, so I'm pretty sure my theory was correct. Terry, it kind of looks like you were in the splash zone there. Let's see if there's... Ooh, there's definitely little pieces of wood all over you. Let's get you cleaned up there. And I actually shot three shots on that one because obviously that was way too close for comfort. This one was pretty solid, and then this one was really solid down here. Let's check out the back, though, and see what happened. Oh, man, all those blew right through as expected. Ooh. Okay, all of them blew right through the three-quarter inch piece of plywood. That is super impressive out of a handgun. There's no denying those results. But let's go ahead and get this trash out of here. Terry, I think I'll uh, let you handle all these little shards and stuff. I don't have time to pick them up. Thank you. And let's do the flipperoo. Okay, add some concrete shims. And I believe we are good to go. Terry, come on, hurry up with the cleaning here. I'm not gonna lie, sand is probably the toughest target on this list. For high velocity cartridges, that is. And obviously none of these cartridges really meet that criteria, so I'm thinking that at least one of them has a chance of getting through this six inch box to the three quarter inch piece of plywood. I don't know. But if not, I have a special surprise that I think might. Well, I've never seen that before. The box is still smoking, if you can see that. It's weird. Let's turn it around. Hope that the box is not on fire and see absolutely nothing. Guess we better shoot these other ones real quick before uh, this whole box catches on fire. I mean, I don't know why it's still smoking. Absolutely nothing on this either. Terry. This place is still freaking filthy. That's no way to treat our guests. Oh, you aren't talking now, huh? Well, anyway, the uh, shot was pretty much centered right on the money, at least left and right. Now let's turn it around and see absolutely nothing on the back. Absolutely nothing. Can the 357 Magnum do it? I don't know.
I'm telling you, the 357 Magnum is like a freaking cannon going off. The recoil's not too bad, but that blast is just like, oh my gosh. But anyway, pretty much centered right on the money as well. Now let's turn it around and see absolutely nothing on the back. Absolutely nothing on the plywood either. Well... This calls for the surprise. This is a 100 grain AP 9mm bullet sent to me by Buffman Range, so definitely go check out his channel. But if anything has a chance of going through that box, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Probably not though since it came out of my mouth. One thing that was apparent is that there was definitely a point of impact shift. Terry, no spoilers. Now let's turn it around. I'm really... Oh, shit. Oh, shit, guys. Look at that. Let's see if it made... Okay, I don't see anything on the three-quarter inch piece of plywood. Let's see. We can find that bullet anywhere. I was looking all around, and then I think I figured it out. It did not actually come out of the box i don't think because i put my finger on it okay yeah i definitely feel the bullet right there let me go in through the top and see if i could get it all right there it is it was still inside the uh, sandbox somehow the jacket did not come apart from the rest of the projectile but it still did a much better job than any of the fmj projectiles so uh that is pretty impressive but we'll call it a draw for the rest of the projectiles i got a pretty good collection of bullets going today we interrupt this program to bring you Terry's Point Blank Halftime Show. Alright buddy, which one's gonna win? 9mm, are you nuts? Well, you heard him, but I'm not so sure it's gonna play out that way. We'll see though. Now let's get this sandbox with a freshly made hole on the back. First one, that is super impressive. Get the uh, concrete, we'll save those, and we will do the flipperoo. Okay, Terry, you need to clean up your freaking mess. This is the last time I'm asking. And now the wings. Composite, aggregate, bonded. These are just a few words that describe our next target. Solid concrete. It may only be 1.57 inches thick, but that is just thick enough to do some damage. To the bullets, at least. Let's see if any can make it the whole way through, because I think we are good to go. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be too hard to put Humpty Dumpty back together, because that was freaking terrible performance. I mean, look at how shallow that went. Let's check it out up here. Look at how freaking shallow that went. I mean, not even a quarter inch into the concrete. Surely the nine can do better than that. Looks can be deceiving, but I'd say that was a much better result than the 38 Special. Now let's check out the block. This one's going to be a lot harder to uh, put back together. Give me a minute. That was much better performance than that 38 Special. The 38 Special, as you could see, did not blow out the back, but the 9mm definitely did. I mean, the bullet didn't actually come out, but it blew all the uh, concrete out of the back. Much better performance there. But obviously it still didn't get to the 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. But that doesn't mean the 357 Magnum won't. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Guys, I thought I lost a nut there for a second. This little piece of uh, copper jacket came back and hit me right in that area, so I'm pretty fortunate it wasn't going any faster. The shield is pretty useful though, huh? But anyway, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that was definitely the best performance. Let's check out the three-quarter inch piece of ply. Oh yeah, definitely no signs of a bullet, but uh, it threw some concrete shards pretty freaking hard at this three quarter inch piece of plywood and guys i think i found something pretty cool down here i don't know which one this was from it could have been the 357 magnum but check that out man all the king's horses and all the king's men could not put this freaking block back together again because it's all in a million freaking pieces I, i'm not even gonna attempt it the 357 magnum won this round all right get these wings out of here and we gotta flip this bad boy over this time. Oh, that's a lot of dust. All right, we are looking good. Terry, I'm not even gonna bother anymore. 
This is the eighth inch piece of mild steel that I would normally start these cartridges off with if I was willing to shoot mild steel with these cartridges, but I'm not. Especially with what happened to my lower half on that last shot, you know? Although I have shot 357 Magnum at steel before, here's what happened. How about we start the 357 Magnum off with an eighth inch mild steel plate? Well, can it go through a tin can? Yep, I think so. And based on those results, none of them are going through, which is why. Target number four is this block of clear ballistics gel sent to me by, you guessed it, clear ballistics gel. So big thank you to them for that. So let's see which one of these XTPs does the best on that gel. But first, how about some velocities? Without further ado, right where I wanted it to hit this time. Now let's check out that wound channel. Ooh, that's actually a lot better than I thought it would be based on those velocities, and I don't know. Oh, somehow the 38 Special made it the whole way through the block. Surely it couldn't have much kinetic energy coming out, though. Uh, give me a minute. Yeah, guys, I'm not seeing that bullet anywhere. I'll keep looking as we keep shooting, but uh, let's move on to the 9. There's where that nine landed. Now let's check out the wound channel. Okay, it did a little better than the 38 special for sure, especially out at the extended uh, lengths, but let's see. Oh, there it is. There it is. It almost poked out the block too. Probably to never be found again, just like the 38 special. Still super shocked that it made it the whole way out the block. I guess it just didn't expand much, but uh, let's try that 357 Magnum. <laughs> All right, terrible first shot. I'm just glad it didn't go any lower, but uh, let me angle this upward or downward, however you want to look at it, because uh, these shots are not, these lower shots are not easy being tall. All right, let's try that again. All right, much better shot placement that time. Now let's see what happened. I'm not gonna lie, I already know it went the whole way through because I saw this bullet come out and I actually heard it hit the steel back there. Deformed it to high hell, but let's see what the wound cavity looked like. Oh yeah, that is a nice looking wound channel right there. I mean, nothing crazy significant, but definitely a lot more damage than the other cartridges. I'd say this is uh, definitely clear proof who the winner is. Get it? Clear? All right, that was a terrible joke. Even after going the whole way through the block, it looks like the bullet had some pretty significant energy coming out the other end, so take that for what it's worth. I don't know if we just caught it on the right frame or what, but that 38 Special looked super freaking impressive. But obviously the 357 Magnum won this round. So, is there really a big difference between these three cartridges? Yes, obviously, but the difference really wasn't as big as I thought it would be. And the 9mm also holds 19 plus 1 compared to 6, so there's also that. 